。加拿大滑铁卢大学物理与天文学系教授 Donna Strickland 是诺贝尔物理奖五十五年来首位女性得主，一百一十八年来第三位女性得主。她在二零一八年与 Arthur s h k i n Gerard Moore 共同获得诺贝尔物理奖。每年百万人进行镭射近视矫正手术。这项镭射应用来自 Donna Strickland 与指导教授 Gerard Moore 共同发明的周周脉冲放大技术。这项发明广泛应用于精密材料加工、半导体制成、纳米科学与医疗，对现代生活影响深远。Donna Strickland 于1月12日应台湾桥梁计划访台，在台湾大学以。Why trust in science is important. 发表专题演讲，并接受风传媒专访。台湾桥梁计划由台湾大学宋公元先生顶尖研究讲座、世界和平基金会、中央研究院与多所国内大学联合推动。A lot of people made a big deal about me being the third woman, but nobody really talked about how each of us. We're really the only woman alive. Each of the first three were always the only woman alive having it. But I do point out now that I've gone from being the third to one of three alive, and in very you know short time. And so things are improving. And so I'd like to celebrate the success rather than the failures. I think that society doesn't care enough about physics, right? Most parents tell their kids if they're good in science, be a medical doctor. If they're good on the arts, be a lawyer. These are the two fields that pay well. And paying well is what society is the way society says this is important, right? So this, I think, when society says physics is the most important thing to do, women will flock to it. Well, I don't know. I mean, I've led a charmed life, and I think some of it is luck. This is why when people say, you know, what can I do to win a Nobel Prize? I said, well, try not winning. You know, don't worry about winning a Nobel Prize because too few of us get to win. I mean, I got to work in a group. I was the seventh student. Uh, I think they were all equally bright and working equally hard to me, but I'm the one who won the Nobel, got to do the Nobel Prize-winning project. You know, I'm just lucky. Well, you have to be in the right place at the right time. I think、uh, young scientists can learn from me that、um, I didn't necessarily do what was the cool, hot thing at the moment. I did what I wanted to do and what I wanted to study. Um, I was the only one in the group even working on high-intensity lasers. Now Gerard gave me the topic and asked if I would be interested in it. Okay, but、um, and, and I ran with it, saying, "Yeah, this sounds really fun."、Uh, and so I think this is one of the things that people could take from me is that you have all kinds of voices in your head saying to do this, do this, do this because it's important. But really, I think you do your best work when you're doing something you really want to do. And so you should just try to figure out. What it is that you really want to do, and then do it the best you can. Oh, undoubtedly, my two parents. I think my parents took us to museums and took us to art galleries and took us traveling、um, as best they could with, within the budget that they had.、Uh, and so I think they wanted us to have as big a view of life as they could offer us, and expose us to as many things as they could expose us to. Two pieces of advice she gave me. One is that she kept saying how she wished she had stuck to her guns and gone into math. She would be a better math teacher than she would have been an English or history teacher. I think she was a good teacher, but I think again she, she would have enjoyed doing math much more. And she also is the one who said that the, her great lesson: you have to learn to be happy where you are, not wishing you were somewhere else. I get fun in the lab. No fun. I think I think it's fun. I think optics is particularly fun to do because we actually get to see things happening, right? I work in nonlinear optics, where one color of light turns another color of light. Or what I'm doing now, we make a picket fence of colors all the way from the ultraviolet that we don't see to the infrared that we don't see, but at least 16 colors that we do see and that they're all different. And so, I mean, to some extent, it's just a beautiful thing to watch happen. It's like magic is happening. In front of you, and we're trying to explain the magic. That's the way I see science: is that it's magic until we explain it, and then we try to explain. You know, obviously,、um, we have a role to play in、um, climate change. We have a role to play in not only making sure we understand the science of it, but that we find ways to communicate it better. And how do we bring the people to hear us? Who don't already believe in science—that's that, going to be the big challenge. 
and scientists will have to listen to why we've lost um, the trust so that we can um, do it better. I think this is my main message today. It has to be a dialogue. Just find what it is that you really want to do. Don't chase what's really hot right now because each subject, whether it's quantum uh, computing or now AI, will have about a 10-year life cycle and then it'll be gone. It won't be the hottest thing. Something else will come along and become the hottest thing. So you should really pick the science you want to study because you want to study it and then you'll do a really good job 